Ramble. Thank you to DoorDash, Chime, BetterHelp, and Thrive for sponsoring today's episode of The Tripod. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it, bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Hey, 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 hey. Bring it back, bring it back now, baby. Bring it back, bring it back now, baby. New year, new us. Fresh, fun. The new year, new you. <laughs> Welcome to the motherfucking tripod, everybody. Ooh, Happy New, new, new year. year. Same us, same silly nonsense. Sort but of new us. <laughs> is it new? <laughs> well, it's rainy. Rain, Miles rainy. is now rainy. Rainy is, rainy is now Miles. Captain of the ship. Captain Rainy reporting for duty. <gasps> what, if we, what if we call <laughs> this all the time when Miles and I hear the escape pod? Yeah. And we're flying through space. Okay. <laughs> oh, and you're man. you're at the, the you're steering the escape pod. <laughs> Captain yeah. Rainey, ship's log. <laughs> yeah. I gotta watch Star Trek to prep. Okay, get or, on. Or it. any to sci-fi know. thing. It's pretty but tropey. Star Trek is fun. We could, we don't I don't I don't have as much Star Trek knowledge as other sci-fi knowledge, although I have I have plenty, I think. Okay, so if you're listening to this in the future, the year is twenty twenty three. The tripod has just been ejected from our spacecraft. We're hurtling through space looking for a new destination. A mythic planet called Earth. <laughs> Man, fucking space, TV shows and movies, great music. <laughs> they all have the best music. They're Hot always take. epic. They're all almost always entirely stolen from Holst. Uh, the planet, the planet, sweet, which like, is also about space, which, which is about space. And everybody's like, "Well, how? how where should I been inspir- inspired by? Like, oh, how about this guy who already did a whole nine-piece space anthem? You concert. fuck with Holst, Rainy? Huh? I don't even. I don't know who that man is. Yes, you do, <laughs> Gustav Holst. Maybe Gustavo. I can't remember. Is he? He's a composer. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> well, rest, rest in peace. He's been rest a, in peace. a while. Rest, yeah. How okay. about Wagner? Okay. I'm not okay. Well, what I will say is, I do love a good a movie soundtrack. Easy A has a good one. <laughs> like, <laughs> half of my music is from movies. Okay, that's yeah. good. The classic composition of Easy, Easy A. A. Oh, I didn't even I, know that that it I, won Grammys and Oscars I'm sure and Academy did. Awards. Sing us great. some. Sing us some Holst. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, there's the Planet Suite, which is um, what's the one that everyone knows. There's Jupiter. Yeah, I think it's Jupiter. But I honestly, it's one of those things where I know it, and then you ask me to do I, it, same, and, I, same. and I'm like, I don't know. I, if is. you played it, I'd be like, I could maybe pick out because Mars and Jupiter are the most like epic, like warry. Mars is is like literally uses this, this Jupiter. Is this Jupiter or do Mars? Oh yeah. Dun, 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 dun. This one's like gladiator steals from this. Um and you can tell, like, it's like, oh yeah, that's that's gladiator. Like basically all the best epic blockbuster movies, they just You want some Mars, bro? I'm gonna skip to the middle. Right, this sounds like Star Wars. Like it, like yeah, that psychs me up. Yeah, that it's good. Stokes me up. It's fucking good. I just found out that Mike White of White Lotus fame also did um, School, School of Rock. Rock. Yeah, Ned Schneebly. Yeah. yeah, I was just watching it last night. Started it. It was funny. You just started White Lotus or School? No, of Rock? no, no. School of Rock. <laughs> but I see, I'd seen it before. I'm stoked for Mike White. This is not yeah. a hot take here, but he's just he's been crushing in the background mm-hmm. for a while. Enlightened is such a great underrated show on HBO, oh. starring the wonderful Laura Dern, and it just it it was like a cult classic in its time. Obviously, he crushed it with School of Rock. He's been doing the damn thing, but I mean, he really nailed it with White Lotus. Good for you, Mikey. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people love it. Yeah. There's this short-lived uh, YouTube series that the Academy did. Uh, the Academy of Motion Pictures and Science. Whoa. You may have heard of them. The award? The, the, <laughs> from the awards? The Oscars, you wow. may have heard of them. Uh, uh, and they did interviews with screenwriters. And my favorite one is Mike White. Because it was the year that, that Milk came out. So Dustin Slants Black, who's this like really incredible, very serious screenwriter, is talking about his craft and like how he comes up with ideas. And then it cuts to the one that Mike White did. And he's like, 
you know, most of the day I spend laying around my house telling myself I'm a fucking loser idiot. I stare at the <laughs> ceiling, then I take a nap, and it's just like him and his, <laughs> his bulldog. And it's just like him waiting for inspiration, like laying in different parts of his house, taking naps. And he's like, and then finally around five o'clock, I just figure I have to start writing. It's just so <laughs> real and sad and truthful. It's, it's great. I Sounds love that real. Guy. It's hard I love to a be, good self deprecating. It's hard to be creative. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Does inspiration strike you or you do you have to force it? Uh, I think it strikes me most of the time. But yeah. sometimes you do have to be like, Sit down. all right, this needs to get done. Yep. I got to write a new song for The Wizard of Friendship because we said we we're going to have an act one closer. We don't have one. I yeah. just got to start figuring it out. And then, that, but sometimes that like spurt, like you you do that and then you get, write like three songs mm -hmm. or, write, or do like three things. You're like, oh, uh, no, I'm on a roll. Now I got it. It's coming quick. The spark of inspiration is an incredible, beautiful thing. I, you know, the other night I was just, Maggie had gone to sleep. I was getting ready to go to bed. And then all of a sudden, like <gasps> lightning in my head. And I, you know, like I was seeing scenes. I was seeing plot lines and runners. And I was just, jot, I couldn't jot down notes fast enough. Oh, you know, and that's, oh that's like the magic, yeah. but that's not real. That never, that's not, like, if you want to be a creative person, you cannot rely on that. No, it just and happens. Any writer, any musician, any, any real professional. I mean, and what we do, right? Like what we do for YouTube, it's just, it's a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Grind. No. It's not the word I was looking for, but it's a damn good one. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a discipline. <laughs> it's That's a discipline. the word I'm looking for. You it's have to do it. You can't yeah. wait. Right. Or else you're never getting yeah. anything done. Yeah. Sometimes when you don't have inspiration and you sit down though, then you're like, actually, that wasn't bad. I just thought some thoughts and it worked out. You got to write stuff and not be worried about it being bad. Yeah. You yeah. have to be okay with something being bad and just move on and be like, I'll fix that later. Yeah. I'll yeah. fix it later. This, I'll even be like, this line is not good. I don't have a better line yet, though, so I don't listen to this part of the song when I'm singing it to you <laughs> to tell you how good it is. <laughs> like this, Actually, part, this part sucks. But <laughs> I just officiated a wedding, and you would think that I wouldn't, that this wouldn't pertain to this conversation, but I actually found it to be a really great um, creative exercise, and I learned a lot from doing it. I, I was co-officiating, which, let me tell you, incredible, highly recommend. If you're out there in the world listening to this, have co-officiants at your wedding because they can bounce off each other. Yeah. I got to write jokes for someone else. What a treat. You get timing bonuses too. Because you get to play with the, just the idea that two people are talking. It just changed It changed yeah. the art form because I've yeah. now officiated two weddings. They were both incredible, but like this was just, oh, I got to do something new, right? So I, I don't think one is better, but like I'm glad I got to do both. Uh, but I was working with someone who is an incredible screenwriter. My buddy Desmond, he has written on... Uh, a multitude of TV shows. And so when I was writing the first draft, I was just like, who fucking cares? This can be bad. I got Desmond <laughs> in my corner. Desmond's going to make it sound great. So I just, have you heard of the vomit draft, Rainy? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's just this idea of just get it on the page, just mm -hmm. spit it out, vomit it out, get from start to finish. And so I just cruised through and crushed this speech. And you know what? It was pretty good. And of course we made it better, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was like, it, you know, not to say if my dear friends Eric and Kate are listening, I obviously cared, of course, a lot about your speech, but I didn't care as much about other things because I'm like, ah, we'll figure it out. It's going right. to be fine. It'll be fine. And uh, I think just having that attitude, giving yourself that permission, it just opens you up. And, also, yeah. once you've done it, because you've done one before, yep. you're like you, you already know there's the no format. Pressure. I've done so many best man speeches at this point. There's a, there's, I have a format. Yeah. And it just follows the format. You open up. Talk about like general lovelinesses. You go in, you pick a funny thing to make fun of your friend for lightly, yep. but you make that lightly thing that you're making fun of actually the secret theme <gasps> of oh. the speech. And at the end, you basically tie it in. You that call whatever, back to it. Whatever that secret theme was, you put it together. You say something really nice about how their significant other makes them the better person that they are now. Blah, 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 blah. Nice, nice, because nice. Kissy, 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 done. Because if it wasn't for you, <laughs> I'd still be doing that funny, embarrassing thing. Hey, thanks yeah, so much. Yeah, it just... <laughs> I pulled that from my best man speech. I got to do two speeches. I did officiating and best man speech. Wow. wow. Now, it was a night before. That's a lot. You know? Yeah, you know. Uh, I fucking blew And he was still like, you stole some back. of the jokes I was going to use? Of course you stole some of the jokes you're going to use. You had to do two speeches. You had to write two sets of jokes. I told Keith this. Uh, <laughs> this is my, my best friend, Eric, who you guys may have seen um, in the, the bachelor party video. But he told me that the night before his wedding, he was up late thinking about what he was going to write for my best man speech. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> about? Is it like, focus on your wedding. But yeah, I... I I got Did he write? Speeches. Did he draft it for you? 
No, no, no. no, no. He I wrote his, and then he's going to give one at my wedding. Oh! And he was, and he like, was like, you used some like, of the oh, jokes I was thinking about using. I was like, but I've just said, of course he did. You made him do two speeches. He had to write two oh, sets of I jokes. I see, I see, I see. It was very funny. He asked me to um, to give a speech, or, or actually his, his wife asked me to give a, a speech at the welcome party. And then they about five or six times like were like, are you sure? And I'm like, of course, guys. I'd be happy. I'd be honored. And then the day of the welcome party, he calls me just to catch up and like, like tell me what's going on, all this stuff. And he's like, are you uh, giving a speech tonight? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you, you've asked, you asked <laughs> me to. Of course I am. To the point that I'm like, does he not want me to? <laughs> so are you asked uh, me enough times. Are you still giving that speech tonight? Or <laughs> are you going to sort of let it, let it go? <laughs> <laughs> I did not let it go. I demand my time in the spotlight. Of course. And I crushed I it. Should. Fucking yeah. crushed it. Um, so Keith, you were trapped in Houston. Uh, I was one of the many rom -com. people trapped over the winter break where they weren't belong. I mean, I, this happened to so many people. So I imagine a lot of listeners had a somewhat similar experience. Mine mm -hmm. was different in that I never even got to where I was going. So I was supposed to go to Houston, then go to Chicago. When we were in Houston, I saw the blizzard coming and I was like, Becky, our flight's gonna get canceled. Yep. Look at this news. Look it's gonna it's gonna get canceled. It did get canceled. We rescheduled like we can't go to Chicago now. I don't even if I could get there, I don't really want to be in a place during the worst blizzard it's gonna get. I'm like, I that's not <laughs> why I'm going to See, I want to go and see people. And Do if you I, want to get trapped in a house with your in-laws for right? six days. I, mean, I like my in-laws a lot. I just like. You don't want to be I, trapped. I don't. Yeah, I want to be able to go see my parents. I want to go see my friends in Chicago because I'm only going to go to Chicago like once a year at this rate. So like I'm trying to hit them all up. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm trapped in the suburbs for six days. So I'm like, uh, we're not going to go. We'll find another time to go at some point. But. Uh, we never got there. I was supposed to fly home on so Saturday. You, were, you made this decision when you were in Houston? Yeah. Because this was, okay, so leg one of your... Basically, trip. the flight got canceled. I was like, okay, we're not going to try to reschedule the flight into Chicago because... Why? It, we won't be able to get there. I was like, all the flights are going to be canceled. We just can't go. We should not We should just switch our gears into going home. Yeah. And we were going to go home on Saturday. That flight got canceled because it was a plane that got stuck somewhere in the blizzard that never got to us. Then when they were going to go home Sunday, that flight got delayed past the point of being able to get on the second leg of the flight because it was going to mm -hmm. be a two-leg flight. So we couldn't get on. We, As I saw that this one was getting delayed, I'm like, wait, this one's not going to land until the other one is taken off. Mm -hmm. And the other one has not been delayed. So it's going to take off, and I'm going to be stranded in Dallas. If I'm going to be stranded anywhere, I'd rather be stranded in Houston where my brother lives oh, and that's I can where, stay you, with him. Yeah, that's I was so wondering. So yeah. I went home, and then we we're going to fly out Sunday. Didn't fly out Sunday. We we're going to fly out Tuesday and then we finally did fly out Tuesday but I also I was smart when we because we had gotten on Sunday we had gotten there we had checked in our bags mm -hmm. and then the flight started getting delayed and I was like let's get our bags back let's oh leave. that's really let's good. leave wow yeah. get our bags back and go and we went out you're able to do that yeah it's a little tricky but you can get it you have to go down to the baggage claim area and oh, show wow. them your claim ticket wow. that you print out when like that's why you keep that people yeah. you need that <laughs> and say I need my bag back this flight is getting too delayed I'm not getting on this flight. And they took about 20 minutes, but they got it. They gave it to us and a couple other people had done the same thing. But and I then I saw on the news all these people whose bags were just lost forever. Right. I and that's stranded. And I was to like, be the majority. I felt like such I felt like the smartest man alive. <laughs> I'm like, let's get our bags. <laughs> Cause we were like, they were like, the bags will go to LA. They'll get there on the next flight that they can get on. And I'm like, mm. No. Where did you get your bracelet? That it's a cute little. Um, this bracelet, uh, it's actually made by a a couple of artists <gasps> here in L. A. Um, uh, June and Poppy. Um, <laughs> I believe June specifically is uh, sort of the mastermind of the operation. Uh, Zach has one as well. It's not wearing it today, but it's a fave. I actually That's keep so mine at the cute. office because they haven't made one for Becky yet. Oh, and they <laughs> said that I couldn't. I, I'm not supposed to get it until they make one for Becky too. That's but I think their customer service is awful. But you know they're they're very <laughs> young, like, and I think they have forgotten they haven't made Becky one. <laughs> yeah, I don't and think it this might is not. the problem. Also, the T is upside down yeah. on mine, which is like cute. I get it. You're trying to be a child, but um, you know I would have. It is a little. Uh, it, uh, I don't have like any sort of like uh, OCD or anything, but I am. I'm always looking at that upside down T. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
They're artisans, <laughs> right? I respect them. Of course. But this is the problem I have with children artists. Um, they, you, they're just not reliable. They're hard to contact. They're too. hard to contact. They're really hard to yeah. get a hold of. Oh, Their you're hours are ridiculous. <laughs> they don't even use email. They sleep in the middle of the day, and you can't get a hold of them. They don't answer their phone. Mm. They don't even have a phone, I think. They're like, oh, I'm not on social media. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you feel like you're your best self, the sun <laughs> is shining right, you got music uh -huh. in your step, your point, I mean, nothing can get in your way. There's a lot that goes into getting you there. Sometimes things get you bogged down. Sure, you may feel overwhelmed. I know I have. Working with a therapist can help get you closer to that best version of you. I love therapy. I find it so useful to just process the maelstrom of thoughts that is my life. Through doing therapy, I really feel like it's helped me become a better version of myself, which has allowed me to become a better friend, a better partner, a better coworker, a better podcast host for you. Nice. Very nice tie-in. And it's very easy to get started. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash tripod today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash tripod. All right, everybody, it's time for me to remind you about DoorDash. That's right, DoorDash, it can get you all the food that you want to eat for lunch or dinner or even breakfast. Sometimes, you know, we wake up pretty early and we're feeling like we want a croissant, but it's raining outside and nobody wants to go get their croissant. Guess how we can get that croissant? DoorDash. You can get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. They've got over 300,000 partners at DoorDash, so you can support your neighborhood go-tos. Uh, or you can go to your favorite national chains like Popeye's, Chipotle, Cheesecake Factory, etc. And from your local markets or your local restaurants to the dashers driving around each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because you know with doordash there's a neighborhood of good in every order so you're supporting your community for a limited time our listeners can get 50 percent off up to a 20 dollars value and zero delivery fees when you download the doordash app and enter code the tripod that's 50 percent off up to a 20 dollars value and zero delivery fees when you download the doordash app in the app store and enter code the tripod don't forget that's code the tripod for 50 percent off up to a 20 dollars value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. So one thing I got in Houston Ooh. that I have become a little Santa for is my brother, Brian, got Zach a gift. Now last year, or I guess two years ago, sometime a long time ago, <laughs> Brian got Zach a gift. He's and gotten it, me two and it gifts now. sat on your desk long enough that eventually it was just thrown away But when, they, when we moved offices because uh, like it was, it was like amidst your office stuff and i think you never realized because i'd left it there once you know what happened i left it there the the week before we were moving because i you were going to come into the office i'm like oh i left this on your desk and you're like great i'll get it when i get there and you didn't end up ever getting there that week and then they packed up the office and threw away everything do you remember what that gift was i have I no idea what i don't it remember what it was. i have no idea what it was and i, I never, never got did. it i never opened it so that, I, it wasn't my gift so this is the fourth gift that brian has gotten me i've never gotten brian a gift i'm not I should, I guess. I and I didn't even realize <laughs> that he's gotten me so many gifts. He's gotten me in the past um <laughs> really nice dress shoes from an estate sale. That, Whoa. Oh yeah. They didn't fit me. They were far too big. He but always wants to see he tries. The vibe was really fun. <laughs> then he got me uh tea mugs that there were little bowls that you could play like a piccolo. <laughs> oh right, they <laughs> were like blew, flutes. You blew into it and it was just a one note. Uh, so you could drink your tea while also playing music. That's Annoying cool. someone. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> then got me a mystery gift that we'll never know. We'll never know. And now this. this. And he Ooh. said specifically, when he opens it, you should film it. Well, there you go. So I we're, thought, well, we're cameras filming. Are rolling. We're filming, yeah. so. Fuck yeah. Brian's I, I don't know anything about it. You know, I feel like I, I gift him in experiences. That's what we do together. But I've never been a gift giver and people whose love language is gift giving, yeah. it's such a unique, wonderful thing <sighs> that is so foreign to me. Especially like even wrapping it too. Oh, I mean, look at this. Yeah. It's, it's wrapped. Right. It says my name. Uh -huh. Yeah. What did I do to deserve, Brian? Is there is a present a present without wrapping? Because I don't think it is. I almost gave a present to my friend and I was Interesting. like, I didn't have time to wrap it. I think it's still a gift, but I think you're right. It's not a present. Yeah. 
I don't think it's I quite think the same. A present is wrapped. A gift, like, oh, I picked you up a gift on my trip. Here, yeah. it's a keychain of Greece. Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, thanks for the gift. But if I said, I got you a present, you're like, yeah. you got me a present? And then I would present? probably give you something in a bag. Yeah. Or, or at least, at the very least, a bag, you know? Mm -hmm. But with this, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to describe this for people at home listening. It is a little rectangle. It's flat, almost the size of a deck of cards, but far too skinny. Too thin to be, to be a deck of cards. It could be a calculator. A very old tiny calculator. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and what I expect that this is, because again, this is your gift giving friend. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going out and being like, oh, Christmas is coming up. I got to get Zach a gift. Because that's how I think. Right. I go, oh, fuck. It's the holidays. Yeah. I got to get something. Mm -hmm. What these people, <laughs> these gift givers, mm -hmm. these gift given freaks out there, mm -hmm. no, these, these lovely people, <laughs> they'll go out throughout the world, throughout the year, and they'll see something and they go, oh, you know who would love this? And I just don't have that brain cell. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, I got to get this for this person. And I, yeah, it must have happened. He must have seen something that he knew you would like or he thought would be funny for you to right. experience just in the opening moment. Sometimes it's just about opening it. I oh, finally yeah. actually, I did That's that for part. the first time this year for you, but I didn't wrap it. The Pikachu hat. Right, the Pikachu hat was really great. It's a yellow hat with just a tiny Pikachu face oh, in the middle. Oh, a random gift? A random yeah. present? Just a random gift. Yeah. It was like we were we were there and we were like, oh, Keith, you love this. Oh, I was excited about All right, it. All right, you guys. I'm really ready. Christmas, it. And, Christmas and Hanukkah are over, but we're still doing gifts here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, nice. <laughs> guys, sh shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, everybody. Oh, yeah. This is so satisfying. We should gift give. I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, it's cards. My gosh. <laughs> what are they? They are trolls trading cards, and I'm talking about old fashioned like wow. 1960s troll dolls. Oh my god! Now wow. he knows that I am a big fan, uh, and Maggie of the feature film trolls, <laughs> the animated. Um. Okay, I'm going to read the back. Norfin tr Trolls Trading Cards, Series 1, The Introduction. These are oh, these are first edition. <laughs> Meet Officer McNorfin, Detective Sherlock, Captain Sprinkle, and all of the rest of the characters that live in North Finland. Legend has it in the Norfin Trolls... Wait, yeah, legend has it that Norfin Trolls bring good luck and have magical powers. Young or old, male or female, no one can resist their charm. Oh, my You got to open a pack of trolls. Thank you, Brian. Two magical troll puzzles. Once you have collected all 50 of the cards in Series 1, place them face down on the table and to reveal two magical troll puzzles. Is this a fucking treasure hunt? Wow. What year do we think this well, is? We gotta, <laughs> we, I, it doesn't say. It must have a printing date. It doesn't. This is crazy. Why does this exist? <laughs> <laughs> Everything used to have, I mean, there was like a trading card boom, you know, in the 90s with the, all like the garbage pail kids and all those different like various things when Pokemon was super big. Uh -huh. a lot of, all, every other toy was like, okay, make cards. People buy, it, it's basically printing money. All right, I'm opening up the back. Keith, you are uh, big into the card world. So how do I do this right? Well, normally there's always a rare. Are those stickers? They're stickers. Wow. Okay, stickers. We've got a bride troll. Huge. Another bride troll. Oh, whoa. And a little prisoner troll who looks sad. Uh -oh. He's wearing the black and white stripes. He oh, looks no. like he did a bad thing. He did a bad thing. He did a bad he thing. He did a bad thing. <laughs> he did a bad thing. Okay. So the first card. Oh, they're we, horizontal. Yeah, these are horizontal Ugh. cards. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Grand Central Station. That's funny. We got puns up in here. I mean, yeah. Blue on the top, pink on the bottom. Oh, we're back to vertical. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the fire station. It's not That's a, probably their place. Not it's a like, pun at all. You know, they live uh, in the U.S. <laughs> there's, a, oh. there's a United States flag on this. It's backwards. <laughs> I thought they were from another country. They're from Norfin. Town Hall, also very patriotic. Wait, are they just <laughs> location? <laughs> These are just locations. Oh, wait, there's information on the back. What do you want to hear about? No, Grand I want to show me. The, I want you to find the sexy, find the rare. Grand Central the Station foil. is the hub of the North Finland transportation system. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> there's got to be the like fuck town hall. There's got to be a like I a sexy that troll that's all glittery somewhere no. in here. Bakery and beauty shop. What the fuck? <laughs> Are these just all play? Ew. The old North Church. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor's office. No propaganda. These just places. There's not a single person. No. What? And the barber shop slash florist. Though, first of all, first of all. First that's of all, a great that's combo. a crazy combo. That's, that makes no sense. I that's, guess they're both good at scissors. No, you know what's actually it was good is you get your hair cut and it smells amazing as you're doing it. So everybody's mm. enjoying and all the flowers before they grab a, a bouquet for your lady on the way out. <laughs> yeah. It says the barbershop and florist shop make a good combination. They both do a lot of clipping. I, t I that was what I said first. Oh wow! It tells you who built them. It was built in 1966. It's at 125 Troll Ave, and it was built by Rex Razornorf and Rose Thorn Troll. This is the... These people do not understand children. This is fun. No one wants <laughs> trading cards of locations. They want... Of, of characters. If they want to see faces. They want to like be like, oh, I've got the Princess Troll holographic, not the old church holographic. <laughs> Brian, thank yourself. you so much. This is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is insane. Uh, I can't believe there wasn't like because on the front is a big old troll. There's a big old troll with little adorable sad. And eyes. you would think and the stickers. I'm gonna look up right now. Are all the troll? Maybe cards you put locations. the sticker the sticker on the location. Oh shit. Maybe. And then the wedding goes in the church, and that makes a lot of sense. So you think like the bride is hanging out at Grand Central Station? Yeah, there it is. She's going on her honeymoon. What are those troll cards called? Do they have any other name? Troll. Norfin Trolls Trading Card, Series 1, The Introduction. Okay, see, I'm looking at some, and they're all people. Should I open up another pack? I think you should. We've got to find at least a person. I'm sure the audio... I can't open all of these, though. No, you have to leave one. <laughs> okay, well, this one's in the best shape, so I'm going to open up this one. As you open that, Keith, have you ever received flowers? <laughs> have I ever received flowers? Because yeah. I read a Cosmo article that was no. like, you should get men flowers because they never, they've never gotten them. Oh shit! We got Captain Blaze. Fuck yeah! Oh, there it that's is. Hot. That's who we were looking for. <laughs> and he's saying, Fido, get off that hydrant. And See, this is this is way better. And and Captain Blaze <laughs> sounds like he's much yeah, a lot. Captain we, Blaze is definitely a stoner. Oh name. shit! We got, okay, go. We got okay. See, this is this now is we're in business. I can't about. believe that yeah. first pack was so bunk. That was the it's most bullshit. Bunk bullshit ever. Captain Blaze, he's responsible, humorous, and witty. His ambition is to meet Smokey the Bear. There aren't many fires in North Finland. <laughs> the only one I remember was here at the fire station. Okay. We <laughs> Maybe one day he'll let me drive his reindeer sleigh. We could blaze a trail right to your house. Oh, shit, and he's number one. Okay. Then we got Officer McNorfin. A cab, even a trolls. Cab. A cab it. <laughs> a cab that card. A cab it. It's and he's saying it's time for a snack, which is funny. We like that. What kind of crime do we think is in the trolls village? Wow, each of these packs is like twelve dollars. <laughs> this is salty, the sailor troll, and she's saying tie her down, good boys. <laughs> I like that. Oh shit! <laughs> That's really this nice. is Higgins. He's saying no more homework because he just graduated. Oh hell yeah! I like this. I don't know if this is fun for you at home, but I'm having Yo, a Captain blast. Captain Blaze is the number is the number the one first card in the set. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. And, and then we had Officer McNorfin is number two. Is Salty third? Oh yeah, you're right. This is one, two, three, four. Wow, that, that's five, weird. six, seven. Wow, that's so. Oh, that's why all of the buildings were together. This is Doctor. That's a terrible way to to do this. Doctor Orlov, who just delivered twins. Look at these little baby twin trolls. Aww. <laughs> Oh my God! Look at Flo, this fucking icon. You should not open any other packs because they. Well, there's uh, only one more. I know, but keep it because the closed packs are worth twelve dollars, and the whole set is, is actually five dollars. You think that the whole I'm set gonna, of fifty is five bucks? You think I'm gonna whoa try and sell these? Look, you think I'm, I'm gonna wait for the value you, you of have, troll cards. You have an investment. I don't. It's been given to you. I don't, Someone gave you. I don't subscribe stock. to stock. And <laughs> when that next, when the next fucking trolls movie comes out, <laughs> and Officer McNorfin is voiced by Vin Diesel. Oh, shit. And then Vin Diesel says, I love this. I want to bring back Trolls Trading Cards. With me is on the thing. You're going to be like, oh, shit. This is suddenly worth a $50 pack. Whoa. And then you can call Vin. Whoa. <laughs> Financial advice. Think about Keith. this. Yeah. Think about the future.
Yeah, I'm into NFTs. Norfin fucking troll cards. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. All right, we've got a segment alert. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Currently, biggest social media trend. In and out 2023. Have you seen these? In and out? In and out. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> um, I haven't. So oh, people uh, are writing lists. Instead of like resolutions, they're saying... This is in. Out. Being indecisive, uh, letting other people tell me how to feel, in, yeah. getting myself whatever I want when I'm hungry, in, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> stuff like that. It's stuff like this that. This is but a trend? Often it's like out vodka sauce, you know? Uh-huh. It's They're not like, necessarily as like It's things they're serious. cutting out of their lives sometimes, but yeah. I've seen only serious ones. Oh, really? Wow. But I've only seen well, two. Well, I've got a list of things from two lists that I thought were really funny. Right. And I asked them to. And so it's my friend Danny from college. Shout out <laughs> Danny. <laughs> His Instagram is Danny Night Official. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also somebody and cool to be cruel. And that's my sister's friend from college. I don't even know who that person is, but his list was really funny. These are your gets? Well, so for no, the yeah, episode they're in. Is yeah. some people. <laughs> it's just some. They, two, those two IG accounts, they're in this they year. They are in this year. And so I've got a list of things, and I want you to tell me is it in or out in okay. 2023? Yes. Love that. Staring at strangers. Oh, all the way in. Always in. I'm making Always hard in. eye contact across the <laughs> subway. Oh, I, I try not to make eye contact, but I love looking at people. Yeah, they're interesting. I people watching. watching. People watching. It's always good. Yeah. Sometimes I like to go to places knowing that I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to this restaurant to eat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the restaurant to look people at the other watch. people here. Mall food court. A hundred percent. Good people watching. Because uh -huh. if you're at a mall, that's kind of you're in a very specific headspace. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Food place. LaGuardia Airport. Out. Out. <laughs> Why? Fucking out. Why is that out? All the airports are out. Uh, airports? Airports are out? Blow. Airports blow, and they should know it. New York airports are a goddamn travesty. Wow. Yeah. LaGuardia is worse than JFK. They're all JFK is so trash. far away. They're all... Well, they gotta be far away. This I know, pod is anti-airport? But they should have, like, a underground bullet train. Oh, I <laughs> Yeah, that's Get in. High speed rail. In. Uh -huh. High, trains are in. Uh, I would say that JFK is the way that many, many, many people, it's their first introduction to the United States. Mm -hmm. And it's a travesty. Mm -hmm. It is the most, their international terminal is disgusting. You hear me, JFK? You're a disgrace <laughs> to I your city and your nation. The JetBlue terminal is really nice. Way to go, JetBlue. Yeah, good job, JetBlue. You did it. But you're out. I, I know, and I fly into... New York now, I'm like, honestly, I'd rather fly into New Jersey. It's the worst of the three, but it's the closest to New York. Newark? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It's the worst. It's easily the worst airport of the three of them, but I don't really, I'm not hanging out there. <laughs> Pick your poison. Multiple Instagram posts for the grid for the day. I mean, that's, I think that's out, I think that's but I don't in. think anyone's choice. No, no one's doing I'm that. I'm going to say that's it's in because <laughs> caring about Instagram is out. Yeah. So you just, therefore, do whatever the it. fuck you okay. want. Anyone who is like trying to be all, I think it's only out because no one's going to do that. I'll do it right now. I would, yeah, yeah, I would do it right now too. I'm, you, you would do it to try to prove a point, but you're not going to do that. I think you take a cool photo, grid it. I, you know, I that, a, that I think would be cool, but I don't think people are going to be like. I took a good photo of Jack today. Habitually, okay. Let's see. Let let's see, see that. All right. Let's it's see um. It. Can we put that up on the screen for yeah. people watching on youtubecom slash tripod? It's him. Well, put let us. See oh, it that's too. my fault. That was a smoothie that disappeared. I had put it in the fridge and it disappeared. Oh, that they, gross ass smoothie. Well, it yeah. disappeared. No, nah, I found it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was trying to find it. Uh, three weeks ago. How we, it, how do we describe this color for people who are listening on like their gray commute? Puke. <laughs> It's gray. like it's layered puke. It, Sludge. It used it's to like be green. a seven layer salad, but just like it's gray diarrhea, it used to be green. Yeah. It's bad. and vomit. It's it looks bad. mealy. That was my smoothie, and I put it in the <laughs> fridge, but I put it in the fridge like the day before the Without a Recipe finales, they started building, and mm -hmm. then I went to the fridge, and it was gone. Mm. And I was like, hmm, they must have thrown it out. Nope. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, I was gonna, I was gonna drink that smoothie. I guess somebody threw it out, and everybody was like, Rachel was busy, and other people were like gone. I'm like, ah, no worries. It's just a Tupperware container. I'm sure it got thrown away, but that's okay. Do you when you're I at guess home? It wasn't. I guess it was saved for me. <laughs> when you're at home, or we'll talk about this Tupperware. Yeah. Do you? Are you gonna try and clean it out, or no. is it just a goner? 
Oh, no, I try to clean them out. You're going to try and clean it out. It, oh, if it's like that? Yeah. No, 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 it's a goner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. Like, okay, I need you guys to know. It is mealy, and it's separated, and there's three layers where it's dark and dense for the first, like, two-thirds. Then there's, like... A clear in the middle where it's like it's like separate and then it gets back to dark. Yeah. It's like, what's going on in there? <laughs> yeah. We should get a sample a and send agreement. it to a lab. That would be pretty good. You know how you can, like, green. Like gr- squash grow, the beef. Grow cultures. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I could put that on my Rinsta. On my grid. And caption, what do I caption? I'm sorry, your Rinsta? My real Insta. What's your what's a real Insta? Instead of a Finsta. Instead of a Finsta. It's a Rinsta. I've never heard this. I don't even have a Finsta. But so, so a Rinsta uh, is just an Insta. <laughs> yeah. But that's like. But Finstas are so predominant now, I guess you need to say your Rinsta. So, yeah. so a Finsta is like, this is my secret one. This is my silly little goose. Where like, okay, I'm just posting. But your Rinsta, that's on main. A Finsta, yeah. I don't think is actually for posting. I think it's for creeping. No. Oh, oh, no. Is it not? Oh, oh you silly people, goose. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you one. silly little bitch. I just assumed that that's why you would want to be anonymous because it, you know, it shows people when you look at their stories. It shows people when you like look at things. So I thought oh. people made finstas so that they could look at their crush and their crush wouldn't know. Oh, uh-huh. you, that's what I assumed. You dumb that, little shit muffin. Dang, what? What's the truth? <laughs> What's the truth? Re- well, replace I think my shit with brand. Help me out. What, what do I? That's sort of just a fake account. It's not really a finsta. Finsta is like. A moment. It's like, oh, this is the real shit now. Huh? And this is funny. Is if it? you're going to have a Finsta and not make it funny, don't make a Finsta. I, f- I feel like I thought that Finstas were for, I was totally being mean, dude. I have <laughs> <Yeah>. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that Finstas were like for big celebos. And then they oh. had their like secret. I thought it was actually kind of like a Sinsta. <laughs> <laughs> like a secret, a secret Insta. Yeah. It's my Finsta. Sinsta sounds like it's your sinful Insta. Ooh, it's where I post mm. my naughty photos. Uh-huh. And my Finsta is where like only my real friends know. And right. I'm just going to like. Do you po- have a Sinsta? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no, I, it, posting on Instagram already is yeah, too, much too much of much. a pain in the ass. Really heartbreaking. About a year, year and a half ago, I like mentioned something to a friend and I was like, oh, maybe you saw I posted it on my Instagram or just something about like po- something oh, yeah. that I was proud about. And they were like, oh, I don't watch your stories. And I'm like, what? And they're like, no, nah, I mean, that's not for me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course, it's for- you're my friend. And they're like, no, nah, you post for those other people. And it was just Damn. like this. It was like a really real moment of like, oh, fuck, my real friends don't engage with my social uh, footprint because they assume that I'm not posting with them in mind. I mean, I'm posting for people I've never met before. And did that change how you do Instagram? Not really, but I will like there are two different types of posts. And I, I it gave me an awareness where yeah. I was like, oh, right. Of course, if you were my friend, I just hadn't thought about it. Yeah. We're like, you don't want to see me promoting the work I do. <laughs> like, why would you care about that? Well, yeah, it's hard to know. I will say I feel like I post way more after getting this job than I ever did before. And the people there are certain people where I'm like, like a guy went on a Bumble date with three years ago, always watches. And I'm like, you must think I'm like a crazy person. See, he should have a fence. He thinks you're cool. So that you don't know who that he's looking. <laughs> yeah, that's that's he's 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 following. He's he is. He's creeping. I think it's a creep, a creep, a creep, a creep. Crimsta. A crimsta. crimsta. And see, that's why I think it, he should have a finsta, right? Because then he can creep on you all you want. And right. you'll just be like, oh, Ladybug39 keeps looking at my stories. I wonder who they are. Yeah. It then turns you go, out blank they, page. they're a person you want to date with. Yeah. That's why. I, that's what I always thought the benefit of a finsta was, is for people to like... Because because once it was like, now you can see who sees your stories. Now you can see who visits your page. People wanted to cover their tracks if they were looking at, I don't know, hotties or something. You know who has a finsta? Can you bleep this? Yeah. As a finsta, oh. right? Right. But doesn't follow me and it really hurt my feelings. Oh. Did you follow them? I, I, I'm not allowed to know about it. I do know about it, but I'm not allowed to know about it. Well, should the whole internet that listens to us know about it then? And that's why I said bleep it. Bleep it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> People get frustrated when we bleep things. Do they? Well, they want to know the secrets they just know. like all of us. Unbleep it. It was Miles Teller. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go to the next. Then says more like you post and they're like really jokey, but it's actually very hard to maintain. I had one very briefly and then I was like, I actually just don't have time for this because it's like you have to write jokes and stuff. Um, city bike membership. Um, you have a membership? In, in LA? Uh, let's say in a metro in the East Coast. I mean. New York, DC. Bikes are in. Denver. Let's, I don't think you need a membership. You don't need one, <laughs> but it's cheaper. Then it's in. 
Oh, oh. Or let's just say city bike. Yeah, that's probably in. You like city bikes? I don't ride bicycles. You should. <laughs> I rode the only one I've ridden in the last like six or maybe 10 years. Yeah. Was in New York a few months ago yeah. when we decided to bike home from the bar because it was a straight shot and it was like 1.40 in the morning. We're like, yeah, actually the traffic will be non-existent. It'll be, and it was really fun. It was a beautiful night. But this it was, was the also... Night- it was terrifying for me because I was like, oh shit, yeah, where do I, how do I find my balance on this? Like, you can ride, like, you never forget how to ride a bike, but you do right. forget how to ride a bike as well <laughs> as you used to, especially when you are a different size and weight than the last time you rode a bike. Like, your center of gravity is different. It's not my bike. It was not a very a great... beautiful, pure memory. And it, it was. was. It was the night Aww. that Keith was on Broadway, the yeah. night that our Food Network show premiered. Wow. Yeah. And we rode at like two in the morning, our bikes yeah. home. Maybe, no, maybe earlier than that. Maybe it was, it was close. It was, yeah. like, I think, no, because we left the bar at one thirty when they were calling for uh, the last call and we went and got pizza. Right. So we wouldn't have gotten on the bikes until two. There you go. Who's, who's bike? Like, it was a city bike? City bike. Yeah, city so, bikes. Because we saw there was, it's in. literally it's in, there was one right by the pizza place and there was one right by our hotel. And yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> Makes perfect sense for us I, uh, to do this. I was just watching Matilda the Musical on Netflix. We're going to do a Guilty Pleasures episode about it. Delightful film. So good. And there's a scene, maybe one of my favorite scenes, where they're all riding their bikes home from school. And I just like the fucking platonic ideal, this beautiful image of a little little town where you can ride your bike everywhere. <sighs> yeah. Fucking in. Uh, I want it. A walkable city. Oh, I mm. want it. I used to take city bike from my apartment to work, but sometimes the city bike, there was no... Bikes at the little port, and then I was just late. So a real nexus point in my life, I uh, didn't. I, my car was done. Done. Bye. I, I had to get a new one. Like I had, like my car was done. Like yeah, it, it was, it was an eight hundred dollar car that was a mm-hmm. lemon and stopped working. It was mm-hmm. done. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to decide: was I going to buy a new car in the city of angels, or was I going to bike <laughs> to work? And I could have biked to work, and I was going to do it. But this was the time when we were at BuzzFuzz where you were asked to be on camera any minute of the day. And I couldn't come to work with this sweaty, matted down, yeah. sweaty helmet old hair. helmet hair. Mm-hmm. And so I decided not to do it. How and long I, was the, the commute? How oh, many miles? 20, th- oh, who knows? I don't count miles. Oh, I'm that, a kilometers guy. It depends on it. If, you, if it was at the Beverly office, so you were within a mile. But that I used to walk to. That yeah. was awesome. No, this was yeah, when we was, moved to uh, the Hollywood. The oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That would be further. It was doable, but also so scary and dangerous. It's way. scary. That's why the only reason I would say it's not in is because I people, drivers don't like bikers. Oh, no. And in LA, I don't know how you'd bike. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, they aren't very nice to them. I, I feel like I'm a really good driver. I drive for everybody. Try You're a make, man of the people. I'd like if I see a bike person, I try to give them as much space as I can. If I see a motorcycle, I try to give them as much space as I can. If I see somebody trying to make a turn, I try to help them out. That's not... The norm. Yeah. In LA. Okay. Tell me this. You are turning left. Okay. Let me see if I can write this, say this. <laughs> You're turning left into a street. Someone's crossing the street. They have finished crossing the lane that you are going to be driving into, but they're still in the middle of the street on the, where like the cars are stopped waiting. Do you wait for them to clear all the way or are you now clear to go? I think legally you're not allowed to go until they've cleared the crosswalk. However... Uh. As long as I'm not going to hit their body, I'm I'm going to take the turn. Maggie yelled at me. <gasps> Maggie yelled at you? She yelled at me. And I also one time went to go turn right, and they were not to well, the area Well, no, you yet. know why? Because she's from the LA area, right? Yeah. So that might be, because in, in the East Coast, it's like you walk. Crosstalk says, no, you got to go. You got to go. I also, I went to Beverly Hills yesterday. Yeah, I'm fancy. Okay. I went to go, I went to go <laughs> walk, <laughs> went to go walk around the fancy shops. I really, what it was is I, I'm getting married in a few weeks, mm-hmm. and I, uh, Flex. Ooh, 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 flex. Yeah. My, oh, <laughs> and I, there are things that I just don't understand, like tuxedo studs and cufflinks. Like, I just don't understand them. Uh-huh. And I want to just go see things in person and like just, just see them. Like, what the fuck are these? Why is this little... They're like studs, you know, the things that go down your shirt Ugh. that are over $2,000. And they and also, they, they'll fall out. Of course they will. It, I feel it's like you don't a need nuisance. Those. You Do don't? You, you no, don't. You don't, but I just wanted to know, like, They're what aesthetic. are they? And I, and I found ones online that were... Obviously, much cheaper, okay. I, but I just yeah. like needed to know anyway. Yeah. And they will fall out. I bet. <laughs> so um, I'm walking around, and everyone is so afraid to cross the street. And fucking lem- lemmers, lemmings, 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 lemmers, lemmers. What are we talking about? Did you know? 
Hey, hey, all you Angelinos out there listening to the tripod. Did you know that there was a law passed that went into effect on January 1st, 2023 <laughs> that allows you no longer to be persecuted for jaywalking? No That's way. Right. You can do it again. It is not legal, but it is not illegal Let's anymore. Go. It is not ticketable because they found that, of course, police were dispropor- disproportionately uh, only having poor people and people of color get any tickets for this. So they're like, sense. hey, you can't do this. This is fucking stupid. This is a. Uh, problem. There's also not enough crosswalks yep. in the city. People cannot Preach. be expected to walk a half a mile to cross the street. We're going to change this. They did it. It went into effect. So Praise jaywalk me. at your leisure, but be careful. <laughs> Do you know what jaywalk means? I don't. I like don't the etymology. Know. Like why it's, it's jaywalk? It's J-A-Y, not the letter J, right? right? jaywalk. I don't know. Maybe the first person who got arrested was named Jay. Sometimes that happens. Jay the bird. Jay the bird. Jay the bird. We have too now. many of those fucking birds left, guys. You guys said you were going to buy them. You lied, and to, you us. lied to us. And I get it. I get it. <laughs> you were. You thought you would get it, but then life changed. Life changed. But what are we going to do with all these recession. birds? We're gonna, we're gonna... I think we could make like a little tree. Like we could put them on the, that tree. I think that'd be kind of funny. It would rip all of their stuffing out of all of them and sew them all together into one sort of like, um, like yeah, giant bird or like monster, like Cronenberg esque bird glob. Hell yeah. That could be a cool use. That's a good and use. And then, then we value it <laughs> at way higher and sell it to a museum. There it is. That's how museums work. That's how they do. <laughs> I think, I guess. <laughs> Artists decide how much their art costs, right? So yeah. if we made art out of that. We could say it's worth $20 million. Wow. Sell it yeah. to fucking Have you seen? There's Getty like, Villa as a Greek, as a Greek. modern <laughs> Greek art. <laughs> There's this. There was this TikTok thing a while ago that was like, yeah, I just like value this really high on ebay and then people just assume it's valuable and buy it and they just painted something and i'm like mm-hmm. you're a businessman hey look if you if you put i think actually i mean paintings definitely it's hard sometimes to be like is that really worth that much but then you find out it took them like fucking forever yeah. to get good at painting and then also to paint that single one and then if you did the hourly wage like no that that's fair mm-hmm. super fair it's just yeah. hard sometimes because making a single purchase yeah that is really expensive and it's like not a thing you use like a car yeah you might be like well that's too much that's not how much that costs but it is it's um it's how much it costs it's how much it costs i will say that it does feel like every time you go grocery shopping everything is like a little bit more expensive i'm like when did strawberries cost six dollars if you want to save money thrive market is going to be the way to do it thrive market can be your go-to for all your grocery and household essentials and the convenience of getting all quickly and shipped to your doorstep is a huge time saver becky and i use a lot of uh, bob's red mill products you know like the grains the quinoas when we ordered it we saved a ton of money on them and we just restocked everything because it was so cheap you can get cash back on so many brands through their deals page and they have a price match guarantee. As a Thrive Market member, you can save over 30% on every order every time. And when you join the Thrive Market, you're also helping a family in need with their one-for-one membership matching program. Join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash tryguys for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash tryguys. Thrivemarket.com slash tryguys. It's a sad truth that money can't buy happiness. You know, I wish it could. But not worrying about your money comes kind of close. That's where Chime can help you smile more. They were just named the number one most loved banking app. With payday up to two days early and fee-free overdrafts up to $200, they offer financial peace of mind in your wallet. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. See for yourself why Chime is so loved at Chime.com slash TryGuys. That's Chime.com slash TryGuys. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank N.A. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash Spot me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Aptopia. Next up, bad moods. In? 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 (laughs) I think no more bad moods 2023. They are out. How? Zach? I guess I'm in in a good mood. I think bad moods are definitely going to be in. (laughs) It's a matter of time. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, bad moods sometimes just feel like really unnecessary. Hey, I don't like them. (laughs) When was the last time you were in a bad mood? Mm, Maybe last month. 
I don't remember why I was in a like well, a bad mood, like an a, actual like yeah. didn't want to do anything, super unmotivated. Recognize that I was grouchy, yeah. not just like a oh something irritated me and made me a right. little. I was on my mind, but rather like the whole day I was like in a bad mood. Maybe once a once last month. What's your uh, get out of bad mood go to? <sighs> I think music for me. I think it's if you put on some damn good music. It's hard to stay grumpy. Yeah, if I get to, I I like to, you know, something I've discovered about myself, mm -hmm. and I've kind of known this, and I forget it sometimes, that I'm more of a, I like to participate mm -hmm. in art much more than I like to just uh, listen or watch. Yeah, it's uh -huh. wild. For someone who's so musical, you don't you don't listen to a lot of music. Right. You, you like to make music. I like to Live play. inside it. Yeah, I like to be a part of it rather than just like, even like watching TV, Becky watches so much TV. I watch TV because Becky watches TV, but when I wasn't with Becky, I didn't watch TV because well, I would I would be editing and making a video instead right. or I would be working on something instead. I would like that's, for me, media is a participation where I'm, I'm active rather than passive. Mm -hmm. That ideally. So dancing. Uh, yeah. Well, so that's one thing is like if I could go watch really amazing swing dancers, uh -huh. but I'd want to be in the room listening to the band. So I'm like a part of it and I'm cheering them on. Yeah. No, rather no. than watching Dancing with the Stars on TV. That doesn't interest yeah. me. No, you dancing. Me would dancing. Be participating in the music. Uh, yeah, that's better. Like going to a concert. Yeah, going to a concert is way better than listening to an album mm -hmm. for me. But I but there are times where like I listen to music in the car. Yeah. Can't do anything else. It's you the best often thing. don't though. It's true, but if I do, <laughs> if I'm on a long ride, I'll listen to an album. Mm -hmm. But I also listen to a lot of like documentary type videos that I just don't look at the screen for. <laughs> just listen. Yeah. You know what's a really good song for getting out of bad mood? Blame it on the boogie. Happy. By Michael by Jackson. By Pharrell. You're going to bring Michael Jackson on Sorry. this podcast. Sorry. <laughs> He's canceled. We'll have to believe that. But it's a good song. You don't have to believe it. Blame it on the boogie. People still listen to him. Blame it on the boogie. It's a good song. Uh, I like Happy. Happy is really good. Bye, Pharrell. Leaving your phone at home. In or out? Out. I need it. Leaving your phone at home, I think it's crazy, but leaving your phone in a place at a party in. Oh, yeah. I don't need my phone at the party. Why is it crazy to leave it at home? Just in case an emergency? How are you going to get anywhere, Rainy? How are you going to even get there? The maps. Yeah, Function but, is critical. Yeah. I, yeah. How are you going to buy stuff? How are you going to get a car? How are you going to know where you are? How are you going to... Yeah, you need it. It's a yeah. lifeline. Insects as pets. Ooh, insects as pets. That could be fun. Yeah. Give me an insect. I would go with, if I was going <laughs> to. You're like, give me an insect. If I was going <laughs> to own one as a pet, I want to go with something classically cool like a praying mantis. Right. Not That's tarantula? What I was picturing. I was really charmed by the tarantulas we met. It was nice. It was soft. Why? It was oh, they were just so cute. You think that they're so scary, but they're so... Just adorable little fluffy, scared things. Did you think that um, they had a personality? Yeah, oh, absolutely. They were different from one another. Oh, that I can't tell. And they you. tapped. Okay. They tapped. We didn't spend enough time. They were just like shy and cuddly, like me. They were soft. <laughs> I will say there's something about like spiders when they're like really big like that. They're not nearly as scary to me as a big little spider is. <laughs> you know, like a quarter, a, a spider that's the size of a quarter, terrifying. A spider that's the size of a softball, I'm like, oh, that's an animal. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, animal, all the other animals that size are quite nice. They're like a squirrel <laughs> or you a You like mouse. a squirrel? Oh, I love a squirrel, except the squirrels in my house are little bitches. In your house? Out of well, your house. if they were in, I would, not, I would really would, not appreciate them. Yeah. But outside, no, they're like, they're a little mean. They're, yeah, they're kind of aggressive, I they're, find. Yeah. They're kind but... of mean. They also eat through like the watering system in my yard and they'll break it and then water will spew all over the fucking place in my yard and I have to fix it myself because I had a guy come fix it and I watched him do it so I didn't have to hire him again because it was like very simple what he did. <laughs> okay, speaking of the, the horrors inside your house, New Year's Eve day, December 31st, <laughs> I wake up and I'm Wait, waking up early. Which one? New Oh, New Year's Eve day. Okay, yeah. I New Year's Eve day. I understand. Just, December 31st. And I told you guys, I had a wedding. I, I'm I'm best man. I got to get down there. I got a whole day of yeah, activities yeah. ahead. You're busy. Uh, poor Eric. The the shirt that he bought from a very nice store. I'm not going to name names. Maybe I should shame him. He unwraps it, and there's coffee stains on the shirt. Okay, but he's unwrapping it the day of his wedding? He had, like, looked at it, but, like, hadn't, like... I mean, yes, let this be a lesson to everyone. Yes, yeah. try it it's on. It's not his fault. It's definitely not his fault. But, but it was like pressed. It yeah. was right. I mean, and when I tell you, this is a 
high end, top of the line, would not in your wildest dreams expect it. Wow. Armani. <sighs> yeah, he went for it. Wait, 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 wait. He ordered it like online, like new? No, or was he it went used? to the fucking store. He got a fitted shirt. This is a, a custom. Oh, and there was coffee that was spilled while it was being sewed. It must have. No, it must Actually, sound, maybe it wasn't fitted, pressed. but something. Who? I, what we think happened is that someone bought it and returned it, and uh, then they like altered it to him. I don't know how shirts work. Right. But there were like very. I don't know how shirts work. <laughs> there were very clear stains <laughs> on the shirt. So my poor boy, like he's in it. Like I got to get down there. Like we got a big day of activities, not to mention just like being there for your friend, you know? Yeah. I wake up. Maggie's still asleep. I go, I'm doing the thing, I feed Bowie, I'm around the house, I go into my guest room, and I am smacked in the face with what is clearly, to me, a gas leak. Oh, fun. <laughs> well, oh, you fun. were nodding, what do you think it was? I thought you were going to say a dead animal Yeah, smell. me too. No, I mean, it was, <laughs> maybe, but it was... No, no they're very... I, I've, I've had both of those. I've had a gas leak in my house, and I've had a dead animal in, in a part of my house. You had a gas leak? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. So gas leaks are, they're sulfurous because gas is naturally odorless. odorless. So they add a sulfur smell because if you have a gas leak, very dangerous, right? If you were to light a match or turn on the wrong it's, light yeah, it switch. it smells like gas. Like when you have your fucking stove on, it smells like gas. Um, but it kind of smells like farts too, right? Yeah, a little bit, but it also has this other weird smell that I can't quite pinpoint what it is. But farts are part of it. Farts are part of it. <laughs> so I smell the farts and I'm freaking out because I'm like, what do I do? Like if I even turn a light switch on, that could create a smart spark and the whole house blows up. And also, I don't have time for this. I got to go. It's a gross, rainy ass day. Like all this stuff's happening. So I Google, by the way, you got a gas leak? Just call your local LADWP. Yeah, yeah, you call the gas people and turn it off. They were there in 30 minutes less. It was awesome. But I'm freaking out. I open all the doors and the windows. I wake Maggie up. I'm like, can you come smell this? She's like, yeah, it smells like farts. I'm like, oh, fuck. So gas guy comes with his little... He's got this like uh, meter, kind of like a Ghostbusters meter with a long, stretchy tube on top. And he comes in and he's like, oh, yeah, I smell that. And I'm like, oh, shit. And he's going around. He's like, I'm not getting a reading. And he's going around and he's like, oh, yeah, I smell it. I'm not getting a reading. And he cranks it up all the way. And he's like, that's not gas. And I'm like, fuck, what is it? And he's like, it might be, as Keith said, a dead, dead animal. animal. But we just sealed up all of our grates because we had a dead animal. And this was like two months ago. And they are sealed. And I'm talking sealed. So there's, I, I do a tour, like a loop of the house. There's no way. The guy brings me to the side. And he's like, I like to do this for all my customers. Let you know what real gas smells like. So he undoes my gas thing and cups it in his hand and then throws it in my face and gets me high on a blast of gas. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you, it smelled similar, but different. So what we deduced, <laughs> it was the problem because it, it's so gross. It had been raining in LA for all this time and so he thinks that the sewage pipes got like backed up and the smell of los angeles's shit was just in was your guest just yeah. the horror in my house emanating from my guest bathroom that's kind of worst case scenario and so i said maggie i gotta go yeah <laughs> so you didn't have there's no actionable item like you no, were just like we, we gotta all, wait this out we just gave our pipes a colonic too pretty recently i don't know what the hell's going on the smell went away and i'm just gonna hope it never comes back yeah, it's one of those weird things. We got time for one more. Oh, Rainy, if I can tell you real quick. Yeah. I had people film in my house for <gasps> yes. the short film that I did. Oh, oh my gosh, we didn't talk about this. Yeah. Well, we can talk about it some other time, but just as a quick, while we're talking about handymans. Yeah. So we took out like all this electrical stuff from my wall. Mm -hmm. Took out outlets, took out the lights, sconces, and I kind of knew how to take put the lights back in, but something that they did in taking it out made the lights to my bathroom on the other side of the wall work, and I'm like, stop working, and I'm like, this is beyond my scope. I don't want to electrocute myself. I don't want to install this incorrectly in a way that I do the ground wire incorrectly. I'm busy this week. Like, whatever. We saved so much money by filming at my house. I'll get the electrician in. It'll take them no time at all. All you got to do is just, like, they had to put two outlets back in, reinstall two light sconces and figure out what the fuck was going on with the whatever. Took them less than an hour. And they also had to fix the dimmer because the dimmer wasn't working. How much do you think? Oh, no. That cost? Yeah. 
$2,500. Oh, Jesus. No, my God. You no, need a new electrician. Yeah, but I, it was, I, it was, I was al- just, almost $600. Yeah. It's, that's, that's a lot. That's yeah. reasonable. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck. It's stuff like, like, and fixing your car is always like, yeah, that's going to be $700. And you're like, why? But Maggie on looks earth? at me and she's like, that's why you got to learn handyman stuff. And I'm like, but I don't know. You should want not to. learn. You don't learn yeah. electrician handyman stuff. You can learn woodworking. You can learn how to tighten the screws on stuff that's come loose. You can maybe learn how to, like, change out a light fixture on your own but no once you get in inside of electrics yeah. don't do that yourself yeah changing a light fixture i've done that i had to do that in the dark that was stupid but i've done <laughs> that funny. well of course <laughs> it's like when you're trying to find your glasses and you're not wearing them yeah i can't see but <laughs> how am i supposed to find them it's doable white to white black to black sometimes yeah. they paint the wire though so you gotta they yeah. trick you i saw a tiktok that was like if you get upcharged your security deposit like they're not giving you your security deposit back and it's like really confusing why you can be like yeah like i need a um a list of receipts and if they can't give it to you then they can't charge you that and and wear and tear doesn't count start a revolution right yeah, now. Nat- nat- yeah. natural wear and tear there's it, there's a certain amount that you're okay with like yeah it's like yeah. well i lived there for a year i was paying to live in it yeah, yeah. security deposits are a nightmare Focus. down yeah. with rent down with rent up with electricians but Zach, I did want to say because I was on on set for your short film. For yeah, the first super day, cool. And I thought you did such a great job. Thank I was you. like really impressed with because for the audience, you were like, you were a director. Like you were like literally like in charge of everything. You had yeah. a really good vibe on set. Yeah. And I feel like you're being like very clear and very productive. Thanks, Randy. And I appreciate fun. that. Yeah, it's yeah. super cool. It went really well. Um, learned uh, a whole lot, but we got a lot of really great footage, and I'm very stoked you did? on it. You're, oh, did you it spend looks the break, amazing. Like just flipping through. I did a little. I mean, I basically looked through every shot, and then you know, kind of you do that natural commiserating of like, ah, fuck, oh, this this wasn't what I wanted. Oh, but this looks really tell cool. Me this is how it looks. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was. Why things. did someone not tell me that I didn't have my <laughs> hair combed over? Uh-huh. Why did somebody <laughs> fucking just tell me, Keith? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, see, this is actually a really big topic. Do you, because I was talking to my roommate about this. I don't want, if I have something on my teeth and I'm not on camera, I don't want somebody to tell me. Oh, no. what are you talking about? I no, just I need don't. To know. I feel you, like it's no. like more awkward to go through that conversation than to me figure it out later. No, 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 no. It's important. You got You Really? You oh, don't yeah. mind that conversation? I, just I don't want like to so run around the world looking like a dingus. Get with it out of the way. Spinach in my teeth. <laughs> Get it. Just, just, you know, rip in the fact, bandaid just, off. I, if you ever see me in public, and I have something in my teeth. This is you, audience. Come up to me, say, "Hey, finger in my teeth. Get it out for me." You wouldn't feel embarrassed. <laughs> no, I'd feel relief. I definitely try to like break it to them easy when I'm telling someone. Like, hey, I'm so sorry to tell you this. There's a piece of lettuce between your teeth. What about your fly I, being open? Yeah, I'm, I was like, all right, you got to know that your fly is down, and I, I'm not. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not judging you, but I, I do the very. I just do the the silent like. And no, you one just, ever, no one ever fucking gets it. Because then you do like this, and they're like, oh, here? Like, no, not there. Like this one. Here? No, that's the same tooth you just scratched, bro. No, <laughs> you just got to be like, it's right here. It's this one. I, if you'd like, I can touch your mouth. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten something out of your teeth before. You have. And I'm okay with you getting it. Or Becky, like yeah. my close friends, can pick stuff out of my teeth. <laughs> Me and Whoa. Becky. Yeah. The big three. We, that we is let intimate. <laughs> we, the big three. <laughs> we pick the stuff out three. of each other's teeth. <laughs> the big three, as Randy calls it. All right. Well, yeah. you know, we got to wind this down. Uh, we advice for a rainy day. Is that how the segment works from you? I can do advice, but I was I, I have, what do you have thoughts for, for a rainy day. Thought. That's what it was. Yeah. Thoughts for a rainy day. Yeah. All right. Well, now it's time for bing, 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 bing. Thoughts for a rainy day. Their thoughts for a rainy day with rainy. We'll workshop it. That was ASMR. Okay, here's my thought. Taking care of your friends is kind of hard. And that's beautiful. That's what makes it beautiful. Hashtag one direction. That's what makes you beautiful. But I, I feel like there's this Hollywood idea of like, oh yeah, you just like go over with ice cream and it's like really fun and cool. And like you, you just get close. And sometimes it's like kind of boring and hard, but you have to do it still. Or no, you don't have to, but you know, <laughs> it's still good to do. <laughs> but you, you want to. Yeah. What kind of taking care friends? of are we talking about? Like if somebody's After going through a hard time. Breakup or something. Yeah. Okay. Just like, or just like. Or they have the Just flu. going through it. Like. Yeah, or they have COVID. 
and you're just well don't go know. over there well no no no. then you'll go over but, <laughs> but like sometimes i was yeah, talking to them on the phone i just think there's there's a uh like yeah if it's hard it's not your fault it's like part of it and i think that's not spoken about enough yeah i think you're right it's it's tough to to help people through their problems because you kind of have to take on their problems a little bit yeah and uh, you have to like eat someone else's grief a little mm-hmm. bit to help take away some of their grief. <laughs> oh, oh, it um, tastes um, awful. Yeah, <laughs> but you have to. You're like, oh, you it's like when dinner. someone says something really bad and you go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's so horrible. You're like eating their grief. Yeah. It's a phrase I coined. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I also don't love though that like when something bad has happened and you're trying to tell someone and then they go, I'm so sorry. Like there's a yeah. delicacy to which you handle someone's grief in a way that doesn't make them now have to comfort you. Uh-huh. Right. And I think yeah. it's, it's well, a Well, and I think some people are, are really talented at at not making it feel like, at, at supporting. That's just like how to support and like how to, um, and I feel like I have some friends who just like are very seamless and some friends who are like very well-intentioned and like loving and great, but are more like, oh no, like don't know what to do, you know? I think people who don't know how to do it tend to be the ones who've not had bad things happen to them oh. and any version of their bubble bursting. And if this is you, it's okay. We've all been there. But, you know, it's it's try and comfort someone in a way that, again, doesn't make them then have to comfort you. Right. They're sick of hearing that. They're sick of hearing right. that response. Talk to them like a human. Mm-hmm. Give them a hug if they like that. <laughs> Some people don't like give hugs. Them, give them what they like. Give them what they like, a present. An yeah. ice cream cone, ice a cream hug, cone. a kiss. Perhaps some maraschino ch- cherries. Ooh, the Luxardo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The Luxardo ones. The Luxardo? I don't really like when there's cherries on my drink. What about the really, really dark cherries? I don't really like those. <laughs> those are the best. Yeah. Those are the best cherries in town. Uh, well, this has been a great episode, Rainy. Mm-hmm. Great to have you on the mm. Escape Pod. Happy to be here. Yeah, the Escape Pod. As we're hurling through space, counting down the days. Checking the oxygen tank, trying to calculate <laughs> how long can we last in the escape pod. Captain's log, day 374. <laughs> Only me, Keith, and Rainy are left. Soon, <laughs> we'll have to think about food. That Keith, this was with the eventual tripod theme song. This was the tripod, and it was a great one. And thanks for listening to us. Have a great, good, great new year. <laughs> tripod. Have a good ass week. <laughs>